Weekly and now for our weekly news segment. Tony. Hi, Tony. Can you I'm hear just, us? I'm just packing my bags from Mexico. Give me, give me a second. I have my, <laughs> I have my hands. I was saying what you were doing. Tony, we were expecting you. Man. I know. Wait, hold on. All right, let's move it, Tony, because we got 36 <laughs> <Tony's right>. <laughs> <laughs> we we love it we love it but let's let's go i know wait hold on okay um well I was, actually we had a hurricane the day that i was supposed to fly in so i wouldn't have been able to to come anyway but um Aww. Hey, everybody well thank you save it for monerotopia 2023 you save your funds for them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right okay guys uh let's get uh, into it. yeah take it away okay can you share your screen Yes. Yeah. All righty. You're back and working. I hear all three of you. Awesome. I think everyone has their mic on. Yep. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Let's do this. Go, Tony. Right. Go. We're low on batteries. <laughs> We're low on batteries. I know. So I, know I know. I know. Your dinner so <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm gonna play a minute of this video. Essentially, the Dutch government. Uh, it's not even funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. You guys put me in a different <laughs> state. Um, so essentially, the, gov the Dutch government is going to propose or has proposed a bill in which they're going to monitor transactions over 100 euros. Um, so we're going to play a minute of uh, this video. And I do like this guy. He's pretty funny. So you guys will enjoy uh, If you keep your money in the bank just for a rainy day, that might not be rain coming down. Just the chairman of the bank urinating on your head from his office window. On this show a couple of months back, our pal Leilani Dowding went to her local branch to withdraw a modest sum under 500 quid and was asked by the bank clerk for what purpose she needed the money. Leilani being Leilani, she opened what I believe our American friends call a can of whoopass on the clerk. But the constraints on your use of your money are tightening around the world. The Dutch government has a new bill proposing to monitor all transactions over 100 euros. That's about 100 quid or indeed $100. Uh, all Western currencies are mysteriously converging right now, almost as if in preparation for the introduction of the digital Klaus Schwab mark across the entire Western world. Eva Velardinger broke the least deranged Dutch person in the Netherlands joins me. Can this really be true, Eva, that every single transaction over a hundred euros is now going to be recorded and monitored by the state. Um, should I keep going, or she's just going to explain that? You know. Oh yeah, I, wow, that's crazy. After a so, twenty percent drop, there's never been even after a twenty percent drop, there's never been a better time to own Monero than now. Of course. After this shit. Yeah, oh, all, yeah, all the stars on almost unfortunately are aligning right like it's, yeah. it's <laughs> Monero is is the inverse to the dystopia as things get you know more and more dystopic uh monero monero gets more and more val valuable i'd right, say right 100%. i mean i say uh you know monero is insurance against clown world so it's win, -win either way you know <laughs> monero goes up in value or there's no dystopia so now, now granted I, I did eat bugs last night you did and i was disappointed but i got the waiter to accept the tip of monero so i feel you like did. i broke even you made up for it for sure <laughs> <laughs> and it was <laughs> what bugs did you eat <laughs> I ordered guacamole, not yeah, realizing yeah. it came with little mini crickets on top. Yeah, the oh my god! Little little fry, yeah. They're they're conditioning me because yeah. I I enjoyed it. I'm totally for it too. Uh, <laughs> they actually look good, That's... you know. I, was, I went home and I said to my girlfriend, they yeah. actually look good. I'd like to try. And it, I was like, you know what? I'll, pa I'll pass on the steak. Just give me another round. Of, <laughs> give me just some larger crickets. Good protein. Were you happy though? Were you happy? <laughs> I was happy. You. They I bugged that I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry next story next story i can't find you on wf but uh, who knows maybe yeah. okay uh then we'll just move on that's that's fine and they'll come back um so let's talk about um not this one let's talk about um twitter blue now oh okay good um so let's talk about twitter blue is it actually combating bots or <laughs> okay or actually... we're back we're back <laughs> okay there you go. Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the stream hasn't guys. completely died. Like, how is it still alive? Thank you all for being patient yeah. with us. We're on a roof. The hotspot just keeps going in and out. I don't know why. But anyways, take <laughs> it away, Tony. Guys, <laughs> okay, okay. Tony. 
story. Go go fast. Two two X. Yeah, two X. Two X. Okay, two X. Two X. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's Twitter blue efficient. Um, essentially, people are making um, their own. They're they're making a Twitter account and then they're impersonating other people, and now they can purchase a verification badge so that they actually look legit. But they might change an I or a little letter so that it looks like is in fact the original. So this company is selling or producing insulin and someone met an account and said that we are excited to announce insulin is free now oh. and then it costs the company billions of dollars because of that because it just went down um another case that we have is well this one is not as bad but someone made an account under the name of nestle uh death cult and then they named it nestle then they bought a verification badge and just wrote um or tweeted we steal your water and sell it back to you <laughs> <laughs> which i thought is funny or I, this I, don't one is... I don't understand like it, it's obvious that this is a problem why like elon knew this before they actually launched it because people already said this is going to be a problem so why didn't they like you know make some changes beforehand i tweeted that i'm getting spam by official accounts mm. well verified accounts and somebody tweeted something very smart that elon's getting eight dollars for spam bot every spam bot is paying elon eight dollars so yeah, that's, that's proof not... of work, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> proof of yeah, work. proof of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's not even the eight dollars. You need it. You need a unique phone number and a unique credit card. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's it's more difficult it's than even just stuff. sending you know eight dollars, eight dollars, right? You have to be yeah. verified. Verified. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Tony, yeah. what's what's the tie into Monero? How does this relate? How can we relate this to Monero? Well, what I'm thinking about is. Um, as you said about um, needing a credit card, and that obviously is tied to an identity. So what is going to happen? Like, are those people going to be targeted? Because, uh, for example, this is pretty serious. Like, they lost a lot of money. Like, they lost billions of dollars because of it. I mean, I guess I'm sure they'll recover. But this is pretty serious. And it happened to a couple other companies. So um, how do we relate it to, to Monero? Um, well... <laughs> remember when <laughs> well okay i'm gonna segue a little bit remember how tesla used to accept bitcoin for the yes. product why won't they do it with why won't they accept monero he wanted doge he wanted to accept dogecoin at some point but why won't he accept monero or i'm sure he knows about monero you know um but i don't know it's just uh, it's just a mess for now and um... yeah, it's just elon being elon right now we'll see what happens with twitter all right, uh, next one. <laughs> all right, and uh, next everybody. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about EU and regulations because every single time uh, something happens, as it has with FTX, and we'll go into it in a bit, uh, the EU drops or is talking about harsher regulations. And um, this one is interesting. So they're, they're talking about uh, privacy coins and how to um, handle them in, in, in the future. But... And uh, Monerotti wrote something very interesting. The European Mika law wants to restrict you the possibility to have a non-custodial wallet. In a nutshell, they forbid the only thing that could have protected you against the FTX scam. You know, so they should promote self-custody. They shouldn't. So it's uh, it's certainly um, certainly interesting. And then, um, by the way, guys, you have all all the links in the description. So if you do want to check out the links, and um, you're you're free to do so. Um, but yeah, they, they do mention privacy once in 79 pages. And it says to that end, the EBA should, shall pay particular attention to products, transactions, and technologies that may favor anonymity, such as privacy wallets, mixers, or tumblers. And uh, if you want to, you can um, read more of the article. It's pretty long, but it's um, certainly interesting. But what I mean, that's some? Oh. They're, they're uh, fighting a music battle with Monero. It's, it, they're going to try to slow, slow it down, down, but there's no way they can they can succeed at that. All right. Actually, that'll, that'll be a good thing because then they're actually forced to, <laughs> to download KQL, Monarujo. They're forced to actually, um, um, you know, get Monero. So that'll be interesting. But uh, you know, I'll be shocked if that if that would happen. But I hope it would. Um, but now let's actually get into Blockify and uh, FTX and all these things because there's a lot to it. Um, 
Yeah, so essentially, you guys know about what happened with FTX. And now Blockify wrote um, that we are shocked and dismayed by the news regarding FTX and Al Alameda. Alameda. Uh, we like the rest of the world found out about the situation for Twitter. Given the lack of clarity on the status of FTX, FTX US, and Alameda, we are not able to operate business as usual. Um, until there is further clarity, we're limiting platform activity, including pausing client withdrawals as allowed under our terms. Um, so don't use, don't use BlockFi, don't use uh, <laughs> FTX. Just stop using centralized exchanges. Take back your crypto. It's really important. And uh, I'll get into FTX in a bit, but I want to talk about um, proof of reserves. So uh, Binance tweeted. Um, all crypto exchanges should do Merkle tree proof of reserves. Banks run on a fraction of reserves. Crypto exchanges should not. Binance will start to do proof of reserves soon, full transparency, and they have um, disclosed um, how much Bitcoin they have, how much uh, Ethereum and, and other things. And I think, I forgot who did it as well, like what exchange, but essentially they hold more Shiba Inu than, than Ethereum. And <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> But I forgot which one specifically. Um, but then Monero tweeted about um, about the proof of reserves. In the interest of transparency, Monero developers are publishing the first ever rich list of Monero addresses. This will forever prove our continuing commitment to having the most professional users around. Take a look. The report may surprise you. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Monero says no. Monero blockchain snoops. Can't see shit about their self-custodial wallets. Monero is the only major asset that provides privacy to everyone. Um, so proof of reserves by exchanges are important. However, you should never leave assets in someone else's control. And um, I think, yeah, OK, then we'll get into FTX. L let's also just watch this one. We're going to have a little break. Um, then we'll get into, into the heavy stuff. Um, it's just Biden giving uh, his usual talks, you know. Um, I guess I just find it interesting that Biden's being a popular, a pop, a pop, a pop. You want to put it louder, Tony? Oh, yeah, it's not loud enough. One sec. Oops. Do that like that. That's it. Oh, okay. Oof. Hope it's not yeah, a blast. Yeah. Biden's being a popular, a pop, a pop, a pop, a pop. Biden's being an extremist. Mm, beautiful. There's not even a P in extremist. <laughs> you know? So what was he talking? I, I missed this one. I missed this one on Twitter. I'm glad I did. <laughs> I don't. It's, I don't know. I guess he's a papa, papa, kappa, kappa. <laughs> Moving on, guys. <laughs> um, this guy fucks five million people at once. I guess you guys know him by now. His name is Sam. <laughs> um, Sam used to be the CEO of of FTX. He's not anymore. And there's uh, people that are being uh, fired from FTX, like Roll Ligma over here. It's, it's very unfortunate. It's very sad. Um, OK, but jokes aside, let's, let's get into it. Uh, it's really serious. And uh, just like Body said and we discussed, even if you lost everything, and some people have, um, and I tweeted about it, and some other people did, please, like, you, even, you know, if you're my age in the 20s, I mean, you do have your chance to make it back. But even if you don't, it just don't, don't please, like, you, you'll find something else, you, you, you'll make it through, you know? It's really sad, but things like this happen. Um, so essentially, I mean, more, more, moral of the story, it's the it's the story we already know, you know, if you're going to use central, don't you try not to use centralized exchanges, right? By, by all means. But yeah. if you are, take your crypto off, like, Right away, just use for it sure. for purposes of exchanging. Better yet, if you need to do that, might as well use an instant exchange, right? Might as well use something else where you could instantly transfer, even if it's not truly decentralized. These instant exchanges are are safer in that you know there's no rug to pull, right? They're not going to pull the rug on one person making their transaction. That the business model wouldn't really work for them. So awesome. you know, it's just you know, uh, just be smart about it, guy. I think anybody listening to this show should already know, right? You would hope don't so, keep yeah. your don't keep your crypto on exchanges. Really try not to use exchanges for purposes of attaining crypto. But if you do, pull it off. Possession is ten tenths of the law in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> the convenience isn't worth it. It can cost you dearly. Exactly. I mean, I, I hate to say it. You, you, if you if you're a Monero bro, you should already know these things. And I I hate to you know for for lack of better phrasing, 
you should almost kind of root for these things to happen because it's exposing the flaws in the system uh, and it make it's leading us towards where crypto needs to be, which is just truly decentralized ecosystem where we use our crypto. So the failure of FTX ultimately is a good thing, plus driving the price of crypto down, uh, allowing those that understand crypto to, to accumulate more. Thank, Thank you, you, FTX. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, moving, guess, moving on from FTX. Let's let's move on to another yeah, story. Another topic. Okay, I just wanted to say someone wrote in the, in the comments, HBS. Um, as I've said in this very thread, neither Mika nor TFR forbid self custody. They only require CASP. Uh, to enforce VATF a travel rule when they send or receive funds from self-hosted uh, wallets. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Um, okay, so essentially, um, I'll just go over whatever FTX I have really fast. Um, essentially, FTX, uh, Binance wanted to help FTX out. That didn't work out. They pulled out. They pulled out. Uh, FTX is under WEF, I think. Um, they have articles on on the exchange, so that's very suspicious. And uh, this was really weird. Um, failed crypto exchange FTX was run by 10 people who lived together and were involved romantically. Um, so FTX and Almeda um, have been playing with your money while they were having orgies, uh, essentially, I guess, whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't heard that one. All right. <laughs> Interesting. You know, like, yeah. Like, it's like fake exchange. You know? <laughs> At least they were having fun, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh God, well, I'm not even sure if, if, if that's true. Um, but uh, yes, moving on, don't don't trust FTX, don't trust anybody. Like, uh, as we've discussed, use Kraken, use Binance just to get Monero and just take it off. And uh, banks are not your friend either. Nigeria's central bank freezes accounts of police brutality protesters. Biden administration wants to make it easier to seize crypto without criminal charges. Wells Fargo closes accounts claiming high risk. What is high risk? Please give me a chance. WeChat users in China are handwriting apologies to get their banned accounts back. Don't trust banks. Don't trust C CEXs. Don't trust them. Um, this is the CEO of Alameda. Uh, she's 28 and she's a Harry Potter fan, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, but um, this article details her story and how she, how she uh, became the CEO of Alameda. And um, it's very interesting because um, in the beginning, she wasn't, um, wait, where is it? So I can use the words that he says. Um, there were a bunch of decisions, a lot of which were really uncertain and that this was terrifying. So she was put in a position that she was not um, eligible to be in. She didn't have the knowledge to. And um, they've, they've done a lot, of, a lot of things, moving funds around and, it led to to what happened essentially um now whenever you see a high all in the thread from a ceo it's usually not a good thing um today i filed ftx ftx us and alameda for voluntary chapter 11 proceedings in the us i'm really sorry again uh that we ended up here um it's it, it's sad but yeah tony any other ftx i mean i think we we got the gist with ftx it's a it's a disaster <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to give it any more any more uh, attention to be honest um okay. and, yeah Let's move on because we're at 15 percent. so yeah move on, okay. move on move on okay okay um here gensler ftx okay we're not going to talk about that oh, well this is also ftx should i well essentially canadian teachers um pension plan have invested in ftx and we're uh, off they... again oh we're back you're back um, yeah, so essentially, they, uh, the Canadian teachers pension plan invested in FTX, and obviously, they, they lost their money, but uh, the amount that they invested was so small. They have billions of dollars invested, so 95 million is. So, Er Chichone, I think that's how you say it, um, used to work for Haven, but he doesn't anymore. He decided to... Uh, they froze in the matrix, yeah. Um, he decided to, to part ways and work on, on different things. Um, and he used to work on Monero tools for the past six years, but um, he decided to to move on. And then Cake Walt is taking over um, Haven. Haven, Haven oh. um, so it's going to be interesting um, where that's going to go. Now, um, let's talk about the Feds having a 
lot of Bitcoin. They have probably the most amount of Bitcoin. Um, they have 210,000 um, Bitcoins, which is a lot. It's a lot of Bitcoins. So um, it's really interesting. It's double the stash of, of uh, Michael Saylor. And um, I guess like over time, they'll just keep accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. Um, so it, it's just it's just uh, interesting. They have 90,000 from Razel Khan. 50k from Silk Road Exploiter and 70k Silk Road Bitcoin seized in um, 2020. Um, this one, this is an article explaining what happened with um, the recently seized um, Bitcoin, the 50k uh, Bitcoin that have been seized. Um, that essentially they have been unlawfully obtained um, from the dark web. And uh, I have in this tweet detailing a bit more. So Jimmy uh, Tsong, Silk Road hacker of 50K Bitcoin, was defeated by simple address reuse. Um, so if you do choose to, to use Bitcoin to move your funds around or do certain activities like this, um, why won't you just use Monero? Because it's much easier and you don't need to think about all the privacy tools. And in the end, you might even mess up anyway. And um, I think I think this is well, I had something else, but it got deleted. I guess um, that's uh, that's it for this week. Um, I think my well, I think I'm the only one in in um, in here. So I hope you I hope you guys can uh, can still hear me. Um, let me check again. <laughs> no, back to FAX, You are alone. Oh, you guys can hear me. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, let's, let's go back to FTX because I had a couple more things and it's unfortunate that, um, they were running, um, out of battery on the laptop. Yeah. Let's, um, let's go into FTX a bit more. Um, the thing that it's really interesting is that such people are in charge and, um, she talks about, so the CEO of Alameda talks about why would you use a decentralized exchange? Oh, you can hear me. Okay, good. Um, why should you use a decentralized, decentralized exchange when you can use FTX or FTT? So let's hear her actually say that. Well, like, what's the point? Like, why would you want to trade on a Dex? Yeah, you can just trade on FTX or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> how can you? How can you say that? You know, how, how can you say that? Even if you. Um, even if you work for Binance or whoever or uh, Kraken, I think even the CEO of Kraken or uh, the ex CEO of Kraken said at one point, like you should self custody your your um, your crypto. You shouldn't hold it in these exchanges. Um, so it's, it's, un it's unfortunate that such people are in charge. And uh, let's uh, look Absolutely at another off video. Your math degree. <laughs> Use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. Being comfortable with risk is very important um <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses i think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where i've lost a ton of money um well i don't know i probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that <laughs> yeah so <laughs> not having a stop loss on your trading platform is um it's definitely a big risk to to take within your um, uh, your company. Um, I I definitely would like to have if I, if I was trading still, I would like to have my um, uh, my stop losses. Um, but yeah, such such people are are in charge. And um, let's let's see if I have um, let's see if I have anything else on on FTX that we didn't really go into. Um, Let's actually look up. Let's look up Sam on WEF. I wonder if his profile is on WEF. So not FTX, but him um, himself. I did find a no stop loss clip on my own earlier. Lol. Yeah, like you you want to have that, Jesus. Like, or uh, unless maybe there's some reason that I that I don't know about. Um, but let, let's look up um, Sam Bankman, Fried, Fried. Uh, yeah, uh, on WEF, and I. Let's see if we can find them. Yeah. And um, no, we can't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
with the young WF superstar yeah. <laughs> exchange collapsed. Um, yeah, I did not expect double, um, FTX to 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 collapse. That, that was such a big news. Uh, oh no, they're, they're back. You want to go downstairs with the Wi-Fi and maybe say bye to everyone? Yeah. Um, let's let's actually go over um, until they're back. Let, let's keep talking about FTX. <laughs> Um, let's go over this article, which uh, talks about the CEO of uh, Alameda. So uh, she's currently 28 years old. And um, let's see, let's look into it. So her name is Constance Wang. She's a 28 year old ex credit SUS analyst running day to day operations of FTX. And um, this is on. He's talking. Wait. <laughs> Tony doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna keep going until until um <laughs> they come they come back, guys. Um, I did read this article before, but I um let me just find certain points that I that I thought that were interesting. Um. So before joining Alameda as a trader in March 2018, Ellison spent 19 months as a junior trade at Jane Street. That's where um, Sam allegedly started as well. And she was persuaded to join Alameda by SPF, who also previously worked for Jane Street, as I said. When she quit Jane Street, Ellison said that she felt bad for staying such a short amount of time. However, this feeling quickly dissipated when she arrived at Alameda and discovered that she had kind of more trading experience than a lot of Alameda traders anyway. Um, in light of what has transpired, Ellison's podcast sounds a lot like a list of reasons why you need some experienced people around to help with decision making. She says she was kind of thrown into making decisions at Alameda and that this was a shock after her 19 months at Jane Street, where the decision decisions she'd made had been pretty circumscribed. Uh, by comparison, in a startup like Alameda, Ellison said she found herself making a bunch of decisions, a lot of which were really uncertain, and that this was terrifying. Um, yeah, so it, you know, don't it's how can you even be in this in this position when you know that you'll handle so much money and that you you'll have to handle people's trust? You know, it's it's really unfortunate. Um, so moving on, if you're watching this video, this specific clip, please. If you're gonna use these platforms, use them just to get it, to get your crypto that you want, and then just get it out. Just get it out, you know. Don't don't hold it because we've already seen uh, just this year alone, Voyager. I had friends that had their funds in Voyager. Um, that I'm, I'm not sure if um, if if he's going to get his money back, and he had quite a bit. Um, then FTX, and then. Um, yes, quite a quite a few Celsius, as well. Um, I did not see this coming at all. And FTX used to be the second, guys, the second biggest CEX in in the world, as I as I know. Mm, so so that's that's uh, interesting. Now, I'm not sure if I can find a tweet, but I've seen a tweet. Um, I'm not sure if I let, let's actually see if I can find it. But essentially, this person had a lot of money. On on FTX, and um, he talked about how. Um, let's let's see if I can if I can find it. Um, this person talked about how they just lost everything, like everything, because um, the person just put all his money. So I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna find it now. I thought I retweeted, but um, whatever. But essentially, this person um, tweeted that um, I put all my life savings, I maxed out my credit cards just to buy crypto to have to have on FTX, and now he has nothing. And he has three kids. His wife left him, um, and he's in a very dire decision um, position. And uh, he said that he'll never touch crypto again. And in a way, these these are positive things, but it's going to have a long lasting effect on the people that that um have gone through through these exchanges and have suffered um immense losses and it's going to be harder for them to to come back 
into these exchanges or uh, into crypto, sorry. Um, so it's in a way, I guess it's a good thing, uh, but um, also a very bad thing. It's a very bad situation. It's, it's kind of interesting how obviously crypto wasn't made for um, to be held on custodial wallets and cent central centralized exchanges. Um, so it's interesting how, how are, uh, they're failing one by one. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, you have so many options. Um, you can go on Monerujo, you can get this. You can even, you can get OK Wallet, of course. And then use that and put your your crypto into that. So there's so many things that that you can do.